Okay. So we welcome ourselves, each other. We welcome our experience. We welcome everyone and everything. In this loving, welcoming. Gateless gate. Which is the gateless gate of, of our heart, of God's heart, of the universal heart, which we are. We are not seeking anything personal. We're just loving. We are loving. Indiscriminate loving. which loves without knowing what it is loving. And in this not knowing there are no conditions. It is a not knowing welcoming, not knowing loving. that has no personal intention. There is no separate person, separate personal self. Anywhere.
no divisions, no separation. So we invite ourselves to this understanding into being, being, not knowing. Being is sufficient unto itself. It's the, uh, the heart, the essence of manifestation. the reality of manifestation, the reality of awareness, the reality of I, which permeates all realms, permeates all dimensions. Notice the borderlessness of awareness. The borderlessness of being. that which you are, the reality of awareness is beyond the mind, beyond concepts, beyond language, beyond words. And yet it is that which utters words and perceives the world. This formless self, which is transparent. Unstirred, unmoved. in this knowingness. There is no past or future. All realms collapse in this borderless presence.
where you do not exist as somebody. The past and the future. You've never been what you imagine yourself to be or what you've been taught to be. You've never been somebody in time and space. You've always been this aware presence. beyond appearance and disappearance. Whatever you perceive refers to you that which is beyond perception, beyond conception. The undeniability of awareness. that has no issue whatsoever with its creation. It creates sunshine, thunderstorms, the wind, the birds, the breath, the galaxies, sensory perceptions, mentations, sensations. Without any separation. like water takes on the form of waves or currents, icebergs, clouds, steam. It remains as it is. So you are. this absolute reality of being. Conceptually, you take on all forms. Without, in fact, becoming any form. Can we acknowledge that? Can we acknowledge our reality as consciousness, as awareness, and live from that understanding?
not referring back and forth to myself as a person, my problems and my past and my futures and my kids and my money and my jobs and my this and my that. Not going back and forth between being somebody in time and space and being, being. We can trust the cosmic order that takes care of gravity and energies and energetic fields within the cosmos. It takes care of the atmosphere and the breath and the heartbeat, the rain and the sunshine. So we can let go of this impression that we are a personal doer, that we are a separate personal volition and recognize within ourself and within our experience, God's doing and God's volition. Simply rest as being. Without being somebody or something. Just the restfulness of being. Well, if you have any questions, anything that you would like to explore.
Hello, Megdi. Hello, Walter. Megdi, would you just talk a little bit about vulnerability? You know, like uh, little children. You know, they're born in, they come into our hands, babies. Independent. Uh, our caring and our love and our attention. One could say complete, completely vulnerable, exposed, unprotected, undefended. And yet somehow mom is here, and dad and other loving, caring people. It's right there, right there. Mom's uh, feeding the babies right there. Everything is available. Yeah. Wrap, the, wrap the baby in warm blankets and, and take care take care of the newborn. And here we are, all seven, seven billion or more of us humans on this planet. And somehow, there are trees and all sorts of plants and water and spring and rivers and we have each other, we help each other. The earth provides all sorts of foods and medical Process of plants and to feed us and even provides uh, various uh, plants that. help us to see beyond our limited mind. Somehow it seems that the vulnerability of the human body mind is accompanied with a variety of resources that are available to us to
provide us uh, some safety and comfort and health. And the body is vulnerable to human body to extreme cold or extreme heat. But somehow we we have all sorts of resources available to us to protect us from the cold and from the extreme heat. So the vulnerability is a certain vulnerability that goes that is uh, balanced by uh, various resources that, that balance it out. Now, there is another sort of vulnerability. which is uh, the psychological vulnerability. It all uh, starts with uh, a need to protect oneself. from, not so much from the world, the elements and so on, but from each other somehow. It's not to protect us from lions eating us or uh, hyenas attacking us. That's pretty simple. We, we know how to combat that. But When we are facing as young children, the psychological abuse that comes from various members of the society of our, our tribe, our human tribe. It can even be our parents where we really have nowhere to turn. Maybe some of us have experienced that. I would say maybe most of us have experienced that to a certain degree, certain extent. So then the way to protect ourselves is by forming, by developing an inner, an inner self, like a separate, a separate island where we can develop some strength, an image of a strong man or a strong person or an image of somebody who's, who needs compassion, with an image. If we develop the ego, an ego self, an egoic self. It starts by this need to protect ourselves. So we develop the sense of me, the sense of being somebody, whichever way it defines itself differently from person to person. And even within any one person, it changes over time. And this sense of me behind it, behind that, that carapace, behind that fortress is a vulnerability. This vulnerability is, is a cry for love that is unanswered. And as it goes unanswered, we plant our roots, our egoic roots deeper and deeper. 
as we realize that there is no answer in the world. There is no answer that's gonna come to us or that's coming to us from neighbors, friends, family. There is also such a thing as a religious ego where we become member of a religious tribe and we go to go to the synagogue or to the church or to the mosque every every week or many times a week too it's part of our ego part of our psych psychological defense structure this sort of, this sort of vulnerability is the vulnerability that goes hand in hand with the sense of separation, with being a separate self, which is inevitable in our culture because our culture is not the culture of love. It's a culture of personhood. Culture of uh, get ahead get somewhere, become somebody, be somebody, don't fail me. Prove me right, make me proud. So in a way, in our meetings, we're always addressing this vulnerability because we're, we're going to, we go right to the we go to that which is beyond vulnerability. That which is beyond vulnerability is our true nature, our true, our, our reality, the reality of, of consciousness. It is not possible to let go of your defense mechanisms, your egoic structures without the uh, understanding about your reality. It is via some sort of glimpse into that which is beyond all vulnerabilities that you 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 get you get it you get a direct um, validation that yes, there is such a thing. There is beyond the uh, uh, living in the realm of defense and offense, there is a living which is beyond that. Consciousness is complete uh, beyond the vulnerability and, un and, uh, and unvulnerability. It's beyond that realm. It does not know vulnerability. And that which you are defending, you no longer need to defend. You can let it go in your recognition. In your recognition that you are not that which you are told you are or you imagine yourself to be or you have, you have structured yourself to be. Sooner or later,
we have to come to our freedom, our true freedom. I don't mean by the sense of freedom where you have built such a big castle with big thick walls and nobody can break through them. That's not the freedom I'm talking about. So but the freedom that we are talking about, the love, the peace, the invulnerability that we are talking about has to be real. Not a sort of an impression of safety. That, okay, I'm gonna be safe for the next 20 years. Not that. So, it's the safety that is absolutely real. It has to be real. Yes? Because if it's not real, it's not going to foot the bill. It's not going to foot the bill, foot the bill. Fit the bill, fit the bill. So, because we are interested in real safety, we are therefore interested in reality. Because the aspect of safety, which is real, has to be reality. It cannot be half reality or semi reality, or it's got to be real safety, real freedom. So, therefore, we explore, and this is what we do often in our meetings, what is the reality of our experience right now? So as we, as we explore and question and investigate the reality of our experience, we find that there is the realm of thinking, feeling, perceiving, sensing and there is the realm of awareness they are not two separate realms but there is one realm the realm of awareness which does not come and go which has no form no shape no name no age no density no color and there is the realm of perception and experience which has which which has shape form color smells, tastes, etc. They're both there available to us. And since one is constantly shifting, which is the realm of experience, that which experience is constantly shifting, it's a relatively easy thing for us to realize that the reality of that realm is the realm that does not shift. The reality of the wave is water. The reality of ice is water. It's not a negation of, we're not negating manifestation, but we're coming to the understanding that although they're not separate, one is the essence of the other. The wave is not separate from the ocean, but it's water, is the essence of the wave. It's just an understanding. It's not so complicated. So then we, we turn that understanding to become how is it lived? How, how is our being living this understanding? It's not a decision that I want to do this or that. Just sort of turning our attention to how our being is manifesting itself, is expressing itself in this moment. And our being expresses itself in this moment as thoughts, perceptions, sensations, action, action, as possible emotions. So we take a look at that. We take a look at that and see how our being, how it's expressing itself, how 
does that align itself with the understanding that the substance of experience is not an experience. It's not a phenomenal experience. And to bring it home, to bring it home, we need to contemplate that what we are talking about is that reality of our experience this moment, which is always, always this, what we refer to as I. Before we add on to the I, a name or an age or somebody, before we say I, Magdi, I, the son, I, the father, I, this, I, that, just I. Before con the concept, before the concept of body, mind, world, father, mother, sister, daughter, is I, I perceive, I am. So we have to take it home, bring it home, bring this understanding home. We're talking about I, the I am. That I is this complete safety, but not safety in that it's got a very thick walls and nobody can break through it. No, it's this safety, which means beyond the concept of vulnerability and safety. Consciousness, awareness is beyond the realm of offense and defense. It's just, it's the, the, the radiance of being, the radiance of being. It's love, it's the shining light of being as, as a metaphor. It's like the sunlight, you see. So then we examine and we contemplate in our life, how, how does it live itself? How does it live itself? Because it's been living itself all along, protecting the child. But now it's at a different turn of, of, of the road. It's a different turn. It's now realizing, okay, well, now I can let go of defending that child, okay? It's a maturing. It's like, a, like the, like the shell, the, the, the shell around the, uh, the, the germ, the wheat germ. And the wheat, the wheat germ, it needs the shell to protect it. But at some point in, in the life of the wheat germ, the, the, wheat, the wheat germ, uh, what is it called? It, 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 germ, it germinates. It, and then it starts, it, it tells the, 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 the protective shell to, he, let it, he can let go now. So it's a germination, you see? And then it comes out of, so it's a different, Similarly, in our, in, our, in our journey, the egoic structure, which was protecting us, now we're in a different turn where, where it, we're germinating from within the, this egoic stru structure and we're, we, we are blooming. Yeah, so, blooming. And the, sun, the sunshine and the nutrition is there. This consciousness is there. It says, yes. Yes, yes, you are, you are this transparent aware presence, you are this beauty, you are this love, you are this intelligence, you are this eternity, you are the cosmos, your body is, is the universe. So it is that, vulnerab that vulnerability that at some point it's no longer, no longer necessity, necessity. It's no longer the necessity of protection. And so we have to um, take that, uh, take that invitation because it's an invitation that comes from God, it comes from the absolute, from the universe, it comes from consciousness. It's the same invitation that uh, tells the chick inside the egg to start uh, uh, poking, 
pok 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 pik 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 The body mind, you know, we do the best we can to keep the body healthy, safe, you know, restful. But we are not, we are no longer hiding. We're not no longer hiding behind the body or inside the body or something like that. We're no longer hiding. So, oh, here is the body. What can we do with it? You know, what can we do with it? We can invite friends for dinner. We can go for a walk. We can have a nice meal. We can express express using this body mind the, the kindness, the compassion, the love, the listening, the sharing. We use the body. We use the body, we can create poetry, we can write, we can, you know, maybe we want to paint, whatever. But this is not what we are. It's not what we are. When you lose you, your your car because it's become old and you, you you're, nothing's really happening to you. It's you, you haven't really lost anything. It's just a car. Something happened to the car. I'll buy another one, you know, as a metaphor. The consciousness is, it isn't attached to bodies. It's not, it, it's not attached to bodies of lions, hyenas, uh, eagles, uh, Chickadees, that it, it, it's not. It creates them, you know. It creates, it's not attached to galaxies and cosmoses and worlds and no. Yes? So this way we can enjoy life, we can enjoy the world, we can. Uh, we don't need to remain at the egoic stage uh, only for a certain period of time, which now we don't need it anymore. So there's a fearlessness there as well. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. The fearlessness, absolutely. This is something that once you, you sense the fearless, fearless, fearlessness, it's like, it's, you sense your own fearlessness, you know? You notice somebody who is fearless, relaxed. It's like, you know, children when they are, uh, sometimes they are, are scared. They have a, in the, they're sleeping and they they have a bad dream or something like that. Or, so they run to the parents. You know, the parent. You know, it's just it's just grab the kid, put it next to next to next to them, and they're fearless. It's the fearlessness of the parents that you know calms the the the. the Yes. You know, to experience fear, you have to leave yourself to become somebody, an egoic self that uh, may be, you know, vulnerable. Somehow, I remember this years ago, I was uh, camping in the, 
Yosemite, of, of the, not in the main uh, Yosemite park, but off, the, I was on a week hike. So I was on the trail. And uh, at night I was uh, by the fire cooking something and I hear a sound in a certain direction. It was really dark, I couldn't see. So I take my flashlight and I turn the flashlight and there is this huge bear uh, at, my, uh, at my backpack, because I had left a bag of granola in the bag, in the backpack. And they have a sense of smell. They just so he, he was uh, well into the into the bag, and I see the spare. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> in a, in a moment of um, no no thinking, just, I just grab a rock, a big rock, about like maybe feeling in that, my hand. And the thought flashed in my head to sort of throw it on the ground in the direction of the bear, which I did with the hope that it would sort of um, uh, startle him, startle the bear, and of course him or her. And that's what it, it did. I, I, it startled, the bear uh, looked in my direction. When it looked in my direction, I still had the flash on, flashlight on. Then I became terrified because the head of that bear was so, <laughs> I was there, I felt really terrified. But the bear ran away, ran away. Uh, but there was a moment uh, of fearlessness, but a natural fearlessness, not like I became fearless, no. There was, a, there was a moment of, oh, well, you know, it's a barrier. It was, and uh, somehow upon reflection, you know, uh, sometimes when, when we don't, uh, when we're not processing through the ego, there can be this instantaneous, it's like sometimes, uh, you could see a bully who is bullying somebody much weaker than them. And without thinking, although if you stand side by side with the bully, you know that you, are, you, you don't stand much of a chance, but instantaneously you may act, you know, in a way that, uh, that later on say, oh my God, did I actually do that? <laughs> this is some, uh, uh, fearlessness is our true nature. Thank you. Okay, Walter. I love the, um, the background of your screen is so beautiful. It's like, wow. <laughs> That's not a background. I'm actually, it's my back, it's my window. No, no I, I just kidding. <laughs> I <see>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I you came that way then. <laughs> okay, Walter. Nice talking with you. Any any questions? Hey, Maggie. Hey, hey, Frank. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you a question because I got, I got on here late, and, but uh, since nobody's speaking up, I do have a question. I've been wanting to ask you this for a while. Yes. So I'm noticing that there, there are some things about me that as a body mind that I don't like. Um, I uh, like I take things personally for one thing. And um, 
Um, so just, you know, I mean, I don't have to go into details, just yes. stuff like that, just body mind stuff that people yes. deal with. And uh, I sometimes feel like I have to go fix that uh, issue. You know, I have to like maybe sit down and write stuff out or, mm-hmm. you know, I want to fix that part of myself so I can feel okay with myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I, then I think to myself, no, all I've got to do is go back to my, my true self. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I, but I go back and forth with this. I'm not sure which one to stick with. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, if, so anything you get to say about that? Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, being uh, in this realm of, of uh, life, relationships, etc., there are times where, you know, you, you have to uh, correct the situation. Somebody may be uh, being a bully or somebody may be disrespectful or uh, uh, somebody may acting, act, be acting in a certain inappropriate way. Uh, you, may, uh, you, you, you may find situations where you have to sort of engage uh, in that situation, but it's different from taking it personally. It's more like a, Tending, tending to to a situa- situation. Uh, it's not like a, you know, you need to make a choice between being you and being in any different way. You know, you, you are you are you. I mean, you, you are consciousness. You are this 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 awareness. You know, you, and uh, so it's not like you need to make a choice between what you are, but you can make a choice about how you respond, okay? You see, so uh, you can respond, you know, from uh, a place like, oh, these people, they, sh- they shouldn't do this to me, you know? They shouldn't do this to me, which is, which is, uh, uh, which is sort of maintaining the, 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 me, the me illusion. Uh, which is quite different from, wait a minute, this is inappropriate, it is an appropriate, you know, action, it's an inappropriate behavior, you know, uh, somebody is coming and parking their car in your driveway without asking, you know, in your driveway, it's just inappropriate, so you're dealing with it, it's not like, why are they doing this to me, they're bad, I'm good, they shouldn't do this to me, so in the moment, in the moment you are acting, responding to a situation. So, uh, the, the way you act in this, in this situation can come from two different directions. It can come from the direction of something is being done to me like the person, you know, you, you add a person. You, you, there is a situation, you're perceiving a situation. The situation is disharmonious, okay? Somebody has their, their, uh, their dog, dog doing their business on your, on your lawn, you know, and, and walking away. You know, this is situation. You have, you're facing a situation. You don't need to add anything to it. You just look at it, okay? And you respond from just the situation. You don't respond from a me program. No, respond from situation. And you, we have the intelligence. You don't need to treat it. It's, it's intelligent, intelligence and respect and f- f- freedom and love, all of these we know them. We don't need somebody to teach us. We don't need to go to a law book to read the law book in order to understand how to live. We don't. The law book is for is applied for people who don't honor uh, their their the true nature who are very much wrapped up in the, in, uh, the personal self, in the sense of suffering and unhappiness. I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying it's a situation where they, they may act in ways 
that are hurtful to others. But outside of that, we know right and wrong you know, in, in the realm of relationship. And we also know that when we address a certain situation, personally, we are inviting the other to also be, become a person. So here we have two, and who's stronger? Okay, who's, who can yell louder more, who has more muscle, etc. That's always the case. When you are approaching somebody with love, you know, there is a transparency. I don't mean, love doesn't mean, doesn't mean like you, you're, you're a, the, a carpet, you know, you're not the carpet where they mop their feet. Love is a different thing. Love is a, a listening, an understanding, a, an openness. But it also, there is also within love, there is intelligence. So intelligence that, that would say, okay, no to this, yes to that. Um, so then the question is, can we meet uh, the situation that we are facing without referring to a person. Without having to defend your feelings or adjust your emotional, adjust your feelings. It's not about your feelings. You, your feelings are, they're stupid. I'm not talking about you personally, I'm sorry. I'm talking in general, generically, I guess, generically. <laughs> <laughs> Because behind your feelings is the illusory me, you know, and I'm right and you're wrong. I mean, look at it. You know, everybody's right and everybody else is wrong. From my point of view, I'm right, you're wrong. From your point of view, you're right, I'm wrong. Well, <laughs> you know, it's like a Solom Solomon, the Solomon with the, about the baby, you know, the mother, two women, they say, oh, this is my baby. Oh, no, this is my baby, this is my baby. So he said, okay, you know, whose baby is it? He said, I'm going to cut the baby in half. You take half the baby, you take the other half of the baby. <laughs> One woman said, no, please, she, she can have the baby. That was a mother. The mother, she said, you can have the baby. Uh, so your feelings... They're just sensations within your body. The sensations that you give a lot of importance to. Oh, wow, these sensations, wow. Or these sensations, oh, I shouldn't feel these sensations. I shouldn't feel the sensations while well, they're there. But, I, but I, I shouldn't, so therefore I don't want to, I don't want to feel these sensations, right? I don't want to, so I don't want to but they're there. I don't want to feel them. So what do I do? What am I going to do? Well, you take a look. I, I would distract myself. I would go to some addiction. I would, you know, drink myself to, 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 to death. I would blame my mother, blame, or blame my neighbor, blame the government. Or blame the government. It's about your feelings. I mean, your feelings are nonsense. Thing, we, we give a lot of importance to our feelings. You know what I mean? Our feelings are, oh, you, you hurt my feelings, you know, my feelings, you know. But what are your feelings? What are your feelings? Imagine that you give zero importance to your feelings. It's possible, right? It's possible. As a, as in the realm of possibilities, there is the possibility that we give zero importance to our feelings. So then what are those feelings? void of any importance. They're just sensations, right? The sensations. 
Okay? So I give importance to my feelings. You give importance to your feelings. He gives importance to his feelings. She gives importance to her feelings. Before you know it, after 200 years of war and, and meeting for 200 to 300 treaties, we decide to take the baby and cut the baby in four pieces. And every person is gonna have a piece of the baby. So that's, what, that's, that's what feelings are about. They're about cutting the baby in pieces, you know? But the mother, she says, no, no, you can have the baby. Why? Because the mother loves the baby. She says, you can have the baby. She's the love. She's the love. She doesn't, she can, uh, uh, she cannot, she doesn't need to hold on to the baby, you see. So the same thing with your emotions, with your feelings. Not your emotions, your emotions, it's too late. But with your feelings, you know, if you uh, do not give importance to your feelings, it's not possible for you to have a personal stand. Why care about something which is passing? Anyways, you know that your feelings are gonna pass. Why care about the thoughts that you have, which are gonna pass anyways? Why? I mean, why do we care so much about them? There's only one thing to care for, about, which doesn't come and go, which doesn't pass, which is peace, tranquility, you know, satisfaction, right? Satisfaction, not, you know, a uh, bunch of money, not people respecting you. Why do we care about people respecting us? I mean, really, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, you expose yourself and maintain relationship with people who are disrespectful to you. I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm asking like, why do we give so much importance to this me, this, 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 this me story. And Maggie, I was actually uh, thinking more in terms of, and I, and, I, and I like hearing what you're saying. I really, I need to hear that too. But I'm talking about more uh, uh, things like, like action, like the actions that we sometimes don't take or the actions that we do take or just certain uh, characteristics that we have as human, as body minds uh, that could limit us in a lot of ways. So like maybe uh, you'll, Somebody's lazy. Maybe somebody doesn't spend doesn't spend as much time at work as they should, or things like this, yeah, or um, just any, any or, or like holding on to grudges. Oh. Okay, like I remember this, like just this past. You know, I'm talking about this because this this holiday season, there was a lot of stuff in the family that, you know, I have a lot. There's a lot of dysfunction in my family, like there's like in a lot of our families, right? Yeah, welcome, and, welcome you know, to family. <laughs> yeah, family it's club. <laughs> yeah, it's a big club. It's a big club. I know, <laughs> but things like letting go of resentments. I know that. Yeah. Where I let, where I able more to let go of resentments. Uh, some things are very legitimate, you know, in yeah. my book. But if I let go of those resentments, there'd be more peace, there'd be more harmony, yeah. more people would be happy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. But I just can't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't let go of certain resentments. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Stuff like that. I, well, I guess that is feelings. You're talking about feelings, but no, no, it's but like the action. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you see, the, the thing about uh, resentment is we, we resent because we uh, believe that this other, this other person, uh, they did something, you know, they did something and we resent what they did. But, you know, they didn't, they didn't, that's a misinterpretation. Because uh, we don't choose our thoughts. And and therefore, our actions are the result of our, th our thoughts. Thought appear to us. We, our action, are a result of our thinking, but we don't choose our thoughts. Even the, let's say, you're choosing between going right, and right or left. Okay, which way do you choose? Should I go right, should I go left? There is a, a thought that arises to you that says, going right, going to the right is better. It, it looks better, it feels it's gonna be better. And then so you go to the right and you say, well, I've chosen to go to the right. But no, you did not choose to go to the right because you did not choose the thought that said, go to the right. You did not choose that thought. You perceived the thought and, and 
that thought said, go to the right. And so action follows. And then you add, then we add, I, okay, I meaning the body mind, this person, my nephew, my uncle, my cousin, whoever, he chose to go to the right. And I resent that because when he went to the right, this and that and that and that happened. We need to understand and really, really get it. Really get it. Because if we don't really get it, the resentment stays. You have to really, really get it. That your uncle, your brother, your mother, your sister, whoever, they did, do not choose. They did not choose uh, what uh, their action. There are no guilt, guilty parties in the universe. There are not. So what you are resenting, you're resenting the thought maker. The, 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 you're resenting whoever made the thoughts, right? Right? So that which made the thought is that which makes the rain, is that which makes the breath, is that which makes uh, gravity, is that which makes the universe. Yeah, so Maggie, I've heard this before and I, and I, uh, I wish I could grab onto this and really make it work for me, but I, I always have this feeling of, the, the, I guess it's another thought that says, well, I get a thought, I know I didn't create the thought or I feel like, at least I, I don't think I created the thought and then I'm aware of it, but then I know like, you know, I can either go this way or that way and I want to choose hopefully the one that's going to be less harmful other ones going to be more more beneficial to me or to, or to everyone else. So I always get stuck there. But, I, I, but, I not everybody, I... but not everybody is you. What appears to you as, oh, this going to the right is less harmful, may appear, a different thought may appear to, in a different body mind that says going to the left is less harmful using your example of less harmful, but not, not all thoughts that appear to you in the decisions that you make, not all decision thoughts uh, are related to being less harmful or more harmful. There are thoughts that may appear to you that says, oh, going to the right is going to be better for me. But what, what about somebody like, uh, I was watching a thing last night about a serial killer. He was making a decision every single time. He knew what he had done before, and he made the same decision, knowing that what the outcome was going to be. It wasn't anything that it was it wasn't a spur of the moment thing. So it's how how is that? It's no different from a serial killer. A serial, a serial killer, when the thought appears to him or to her, you know, darn, I, you know, should I or should I not? Uh, do harm to this person and the thought ar arises to him or to her, yeah, I can, eight o'clock would be a good time. That person didn't choose, is not choosing those thoughts. Hitler did not choose his vision about the Aryan race or whatever, whatever vision he had about the whole world is going to become Aryan, whatever. He did not choose those thoughts. He, when he was deciding to bomb London, he was not choosing the thoughts. Thought, there was a choosing thought that was appearing to him. You need to examine that in your own, in your own, uh, your own uh, uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. Before you, you add the thought, I, this particular body mind, I, Frank, chose that the thought the the thought and the decision has already happened after the fact after the fact you say well i chose that but but in fact it was before after the fact the fact was before after the fact so the 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 the, the, the action the, the behavior has already taken place. And then you say, well, I'm choosing that. And that, that thought that says, I'm choosing that, you are not choosing that thought. 
the thought that says, I, Frank, chose that. You're not choosing that thought. That thought is also appearing to you. And you're believing it. Okay, I mean, he, I'm not denying that you're believing the thought. You're believing, and that's what we're looking at. This is what we're looking at. This is why we say, well, okay, if there is a personal chooser, then there must be a person. There must be a person. So what is the person? This is why we examine that. So we say, what is the person in this moment? We look around, we find there is perception, sensation, thoughts, but you don't find a person. You find an image, an idea, a storyline about a person, but you don't actually find a person, right? Right. So, so, so the, the thought that I, this person, chose that, why, did he, why didn't he or she make the good choice you know, like, like I would have made, you know, for example. All of that is based on the belief that there is a person who is making a choice. So we, when, that's why we look, do you find a person? Because if we do find a person, then we have to agree that there is a personal choice, a personal guilt, a personal chooser, a personal door. Then we have to agree, why? Because if we have evidence, we have direct evidence that there is a person. We're not going to play the game of sweeping that under the rug. So, so, but up to now, I have not found that there is a person. I found there is a belief in a person, a story about a person, all of that, which are thoughts, perceptions, bundles of emotions, feelings, etc., which I refer to as me. But then when I ask myself, well, <laughs> where the heck is that, that that me, what is this me? All I find is thoughts, perceptions, sensations. I don't find a me, but I do find awareness. But this awareness, I cannot find it like it has no, it has no gender. It's like, you know, the body has a gender. This body has gender. But I don't find awareness to have a gender. So, so then it's like, okay, yes, there is. And so I don't call it me anymore because I call it I or awareness or consciousness or presence. But anyways, coming back to, 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 to your, your question, you need to come to certainty in your own uh, experience, not about your, your cousin or your sister, your aunt or whatever, in your own experience about this that I am choosing. Because if you do, then you have to find the I. If you, if, if you have a certainty about I am choosing, then you have to have a certainty about the I, about the, 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 the me that chooses, the personal chooser. You see, I don't say there is no chooser. I, I, don't, I say there is no personal chooser. It's a difference between there is no chooser, no personal chooser. Obviously, there is a chooser. If there is an experience, there is a creator to the experience. There is this perception. So this perception is created. But, but if you take a look at this, this perception, you will find that it's created and it's experienced or perceived simultaneously. It's not like it's created and uh, for 12 seconds later, you know, okay, here it is, we received it, and now we perceive it. No, creation, conception, creation, and perception are one, like one. You, you, you follow? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that, that I follow, because we've talked about this before. Right. But I, keep, I keep going back, Mac, I keep going, every time you, you, you talk about this, I keep going to, uh, even without, like, I think to myself, even without a person there, there's something there that says, you know, I've done this before, this is wrong, I'm not going to do this again, or that sort of seems to go, seems Could to make be. a decision based on past actions, it, past decisions, right? When, when the thought arises, okay, look, I've been there before, I've heard and, and I've seen the consequences, the consequences, everybody was crying and everybody was being hurt. When that thought arises to me, when that arises to me, okay, I may, I may recognize the implication of this thought, or I may not. I may not. A fruit can turn, an orange can turn orange and more orange and more orange and more orange, but there comes only one point where it falls off the tree. You can say, well, heck, this orange is orange. It, it, it should fall off the tree. 
But the orange is only going to fall off the tree when that last wind, that small wind is going to go, then it's going to fall off the tree. So you want to blame the orange for not falling off the tree when you want it to fall off the tree. No, the orange will fall off the tree when that wind will come and blow it off, the, fall, make it fall off the tree. So yes, you are right. If that thought arises to me, I mean, God, I've been hurting people so much by this action. I'm going to stop. Boom, the orange fell off the tree. So, but I'm talking about you, uh, resentment, carrying resentment, you see. I'm talking about the resentment. The resentment is misplaced, you see. It's misplaced because in the resentment, you are projecting that this person should by now have the, 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 the maturity and the understanding of how it's hurting others. So that's what and by doing so, you're insulting God. Because that wind is sent by God. That wind, that last wind, or strong wind, that is going to drop the orange from the tree is sent by God. We don't put a big blower and we, we blow the, the uh, orchard. I mean, as a metaphor, right? Mm-hmm. So, okay. be, be, be. You know, uh, you, you can invite people. You can invite people to, to you can invite your, your family member, whatever, to take a look. Like, look, take a look. You know, this has been hurting. This has been hurtful to me. You know, sometimes we don't share with our family members how we feel hurt. Sometimes we don't share it. We just sort of, I don't know. We, we don't, we, maybe we don't want to hurt their feeling. I don't know, or me, I don't know. But sometimes we can share and say, look, you know, I just want you to know that's, I know it's in the past, I know it's done, but I have to tell you that it, it did hurt me. I don't want to hold on to it, but I like you to know that this behavior, this action was hurtful. That's all, you know, you put it out. How will the response be? We don't know. We don't know. They may go, oh, I'm really sorry I hurt you, Frank. And next day, they're still doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I've actually gone that route. Now. <laughs> <laughs> right. you, I have. I've gone. You, yeah, you, it's just, you, you did what you can, and you, you, yeah. you, you keep your heart open. Yeah, no, I'm really trying to understand how, because I've heard, I've heard this before, this kind of line of thinking that you're bringing up tonight, which I really appreciate, but I just don't seem to be able to grab onto it and really make it my own. Um, hopefully it will at some point just sink in and go, okay, they're not, you know, I'm still blaming people yes. for, for something they can't, they're not really, they can't do any better. If you are, I, I still, I still blame. If you're blaming people and you feel that your blame is right, then you have to accept to be blamed as well. Because what goes around comes around. You know, what's good for Peter is good for uh, Joey, right? So, you know, you don't have a monopoly on blaming people. You are also, also to be blamed. <laughs> true story, true stories. Sad but true. <laughs> yeah. All right, Maggie. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. I, I didn't want to take up too much time because I've been okay. talking a lot lately. So I'm going to pass. Cool. But thank you so much. Thanks, Frank. Okay. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. See you later. Okay. Okay, well, thank you all. Lovely interview with you, Holger. <laughs> and uh, Walter, hey, Walter. Oh, that's such a beautiful background. <laughs> Rahul, <laughs> Frank, Zoe, Lisa, Mina.
Thank you, Magdi. Okay, Mina. Hola, Gisela. Thank you. It was great. Yes. Hey, Jim. And Manoj. Thank, Thank you, Magdi. Lovely to be with you. Always. Always. Thank you, Magdi. Thank you, Magdi. Thank you all.